Seeing a giraffe up close is an unforgettable experience, but being licked in the face by one is totally surreal. At Giraffe Manor in Nairobi, Kenya, you can live out your wildest animal dreams and literally get neck and neck with these exotic beauties. Here's Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang. It's breakfast time at Giraffe Manor, and this morning, my table for one has some very lean and lanky party crashers. It's kind of crazy, right? Excuse me. We have to have a little decorum here. One for you, one for me. Fraternizing with the guests is not only allowed, but encouraged here, so that visitors feel a kinship with these great, but increasingly vulnerable animals. I usually don't kiss on the first date. <laughs> Their tongue feels a little sandpapery, I have to say. I'm sure she has some criticisms of me too, though. What are you doing for breakfast tomorrow? It's all standard fare at this most extraordinary of hotels outside Nairobi, Kenya. Built in the 1930s in the style of a Scottish hunting lodge, it's now owned by fourth generation Kenyans, Tanya and Mikey Carr Hartley. Everywhere you turn, there they are, sticking their heads in bedroom windows, mingling with the guests at tea time. They just love interaction. And they all have very different characters. Even interrupting our interview. Oh my God. <laughs> just yeah, got nudged. Yeah. Currently there are 12 giraffes here. Uh -huh. So we have Margaret, Salma, uh -huh. Stacy, and right at the end is Kelly. Kelly is, you can see she's slightly pregnant. The stomach is slightly distended. But it's not all tea and crumpets for these genteel giants. Giraffes are facing what experts call a silent extinction. Their population down 40% in just 20 years. Inexplicably, they were only classified as vulnerable for the first time this past December. Some of their species are down 60% of their original numbers. By 2030, if it, the trend continues, a lot of the species will be extinct. To put that in perspective, there are far more elephants, whose plight is much more well known than giraffes. A half million versus just 90,000, which is news even to their guests. I didn't realize they were becoming endangered since um, we, until we came here. You can't imagine that that gentle animal can be threatened. But I mean, the history of this place is built simply on that threat. Indeed, Giraffe Manor was created on the premise of saving these elegant creatures. Back in the 70s, then owner Betty Leslie Melville, an American former fashion model, convinced her husband Jock to allow three giraffes to come live on their land when their habitat was threatened. So she managed to flutter her eyelids and persuade her husband that this was a great thing to do. They wanted to save this amazing species of giraffe and um, brought them from uh, western Kenya to Nairobi, to these grounds, to propagate and regenerate this population in the wild again. Part of the hotel's land is dedicated to the Giraffe Center, which educates the local population and fosters breeding programs to increase giraffes in the wild. A percentage of every room fee at the manor goes to the center. One of the biggest issues facing giraffes is urban encroachment. As populations grow and cities expand, they lose their habitats. To get a sense of how closely the urban sprawl is encroaching on the habitat, this right here is Nairobi National Park, and this is the Four Lake Highway. Nowhere is this more clear than at Nairobi National Park, just miles away from Giraffe Manor. At 44 square miles, it's twice the size of Manhattan, yet its parameters are constantly being whittled down. So that's downtown Nairobi? Downtown Nairobi. Yeah. We head into the park with Arthur Muneza of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. The Rwandan-born researcher is getting his PhD at Michigan State. Traffic jam. Amidst the monkeys, zebras, you see the hippos? And giraffes dotting the landscape, another ubiquitous sight. So this image basically sums it up, doesn't it? That, that man is encroaching on his habitat. Yes, if you look straight up ahead, you can see the real problem. So those are uh, housing developments coming up. Yeah. And uh, a few years back, you know, we never used to have that. Now, all this used to be open, you know, animals could migrate going that way. Mm -hmm. But now most of those areas are just inaccessible. Uh, detour. That giraffe is completely holding its ground. It's yeah. like, uh-uh, I ain't moving. You're in my hood, chump. A giraffe's kick can break a lion's back, but giraffes are being killed off by a far more lethal predator, from trophy hunters 
to poachers. They are hunted for uh, their meat, skull and bones. Mm -hmm. um, in some places it's, you know, traditional medicine practitioners believe that bones and brain marrow of giraffes can cure AIDS. And in some places they are hunted for their tails only. So they'll kill the they giraffe? They'll kill a whole animal for that small tail. Part of it. Yeah. I guess man is the biggest threat to giraffe. Yes, in a nutshell, that's one way to put it. Arthur's foundation has gone to dramatic lengths to reverse these trends, tracking poaching snares, and in one ambitious project, transporting giraffes across the Nile River by ferry, away from the devastating oil drilling in Uganda, as seen in this PBS documentary, Africa's Gentle Giants. We've just crossed over the Nile River with six giraffes. I've, I've never been so stressed in my life. Adding to all this, a long-missed PR opportunity for these glorious animals. The thing with rhinos and elephants, you know, we've had good media coverage with that. Mm -hmm. So giraffes, this has just really come up in the last uh, 10 years. Right. So there's a real need to do more and get more data and just see what we can do better to protect these populations. Do you think yeah. that they are silently going extinct? Unfortunately, it's heading in that direction. A grim reality that needs to be shared, as nothing's more dangerous to these beautiful creatures than silence. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang in Nairobi, Kenya.